So when it comes to the last couple of weeks before really any admission exam, it's really easy to just kind of study the things that you feel the most comfortable with to gain the most confidence. But it's kind of making this fake illusion that you know all of the material and you don't know any weak spots. In the past couple of weeks, when I've been teaching for the exam thousands of students at this point, I noticed a repetitive, kind of a repeating pattern of this specific thing. And I develop a very simple system that all of my students use to actually recognize your weak spot. And it allows you to kind of know exactly what you need to focus on in the last few weeks before the exam. Now it's August 2023, so one month before the IMAT exam, that is going to be in September 17th. And I wanted to make this video to really show you guys how you should find your weak spots using ChatGPT, using Excel sheet, really making an actual probability and statistics of what you know and what you don't know. So let's just dive right into it without spending any time. Uh, if you go to my website, entermedschool.com and go to the menu and go to the entrance exam, you will see all of the different articles I have for the IMAT exam. One of them would be IMAT syllabus. Now, the, it's not 2024 syllabus at the time of recording. If you watch it three, four days from now forward, it will be actually the video for 2024, but it's not really important. So for the sake of example, just imagine it's the syllabus that you're actually using right now. Go be down and download the syllabus that is going to be here. You see it's 2023, but realistically it will be your syllabus when it releases. If it wasn't released, let's say 2025, 6, whatever, and we still use the previous syllabus, sure, it's not really important. Just download it and get it over here. If it's in Italian, which they decided they started releasing in Italian, that's okay. Just you can go to Google Translate, so translate and go to documents and just upload the document over here, translate it into English. It will work just fine for this specific method. And also for you, it doesn't really matter because the, do the document translation here is very, very good. You can also go to ChatGPT, upload the document over here, translate it to English, the translation of ChatGPT 4.0. Maybe there is a newer version by the time of you watching this video. It's very good for O and up and above, very good for translation. Same, not very important to be very accurate. You just need it for the general thing. The second thing I wanted to do is I wanted to solve IMAT pass paper. So you can go to the website, download the IMAT pass paper and actually see them in time condition. And like you actually see the exam itself. So print the paper, analyze everything, uh, get the wrong and incorrect answers, calculate your score and then at the end of the 100 minutes, when you calculate your score, I want you to go to an empty Excel sheet like this, a Google uh, Docs file, sheets.google.com, uh, I think. And then you can just pretty much input all of the data you just have in front of you into this specific sheet. Now, it's important not to just do it randomly because you want to do it in such a way that you will be able to replicate to replicate it to other exams as well as making sure the tools that you're going to use, it could be ChatGPT that I'm going to use in this video, but it could be any other tool in the future that might be more advanced than ChatGPT, although I don't think anyone will pass ChatGPT in the next couple of years, it seems. So I will use ChatGPT. If there is a newer method, you can, I will of course update, but it seems like this one, this will be the way to actually do it. What I want you to do in this Google Sheet is I want you to have different columns for different things. One would be the question number. So go like this, question number. Two would be topic of question. Three would be subject, specific subject, so specific subject. D would be, did I get it correctly? Which is kind of funny to write the entire thing instead of just answer or subject, because this is how you are going to allow ChatGPT to know what each column is for. Because if the more words you use, the better it's going to understand what you want from it. So question number, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's for the sake of example. Realistically, it will be 1 to 60 with all of the subjects and everything. So topic of the questions would be things like logic, 
So let's say logic, 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 biology, then you have biology, 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 and then chemistry. Just, it should be 23 and 18, but it doesn't matter, it's just for the example. And then let's say physics, like this. And then specific subject, this is where you should be super, super, super specific and accurate when it comes to the definitions and the terms you're going to use. Why? Because this document, you're going to use it and fill it multiple times for multiple simulators. For example, this would be simulator number one. Let's say the IMAT exam I'm taking has 10 questions. So this will be simulator number one. But the next one I'm going to take, I'm not going to make a new document for it, which I could by creating a new tab over here and then just making a new one just for the sake of organization. But in reality, I would want to make all of them in the same page and then having all of the questions in one big document sheet and use the same exact terminology for specific subject from the PDF I just translated or using directly in order to chat GPT for chat GPT to understand what I'm talking about. So for example, let's go to biology and then you have molecular genetics. Molecular genetics will be the structure and duplication of the DNA. Now you have DNA replication. I'm going to write, let's say the question was about DNA replication. Replication. I took it from over here. You see, it's duplication of DNA. In English, it will be DNA duplication specific questions about it. Now, every time I'm going to have a question about DNA duplication, I'm going to copy this exact definition I'm using and paste it again. I'm not going to say duplication of DNA or something similar to it because then, then you won't have consistency when you actually analyze your statistics and probability to, to get the questions right. And you will see what I mean very, very soon. Let's go to logic. Let's say it will be we can arguments, a very specific one, and then let's say finding conclusions, and then let's say, I don't know, a uh, spatial recognition, like this, recognition, cool, that's, let's say the I'm, I'm taking three questions of logic, we can arguments, finding conclusions, and spatial recognitions. If, when you have this kind of 10 questions on your actual IMAT exam, you will copy, paste them. You won't have different capital letters and lowercase letters by mistake. Exactly the same thing, super important. Biology, let's say I had, I don't know, meiosis. Let's say if it's actually in the PDF. Let's say physiology. So, okay, physiology. But let's go more specific, actually. Maybe they have something even more specific. Here, they have Okay, they have, they have more specific, homeostasis, it's a bit even better. You want to be as specific as possible from the syllabus itself. So homeostasis, homeostasis, my ADHD hitting hard right now. Now you have chemistry, let's just invent something. Let's say we have gas laws in the syllabus and also we have, let's say thermodynamics. And in physics, it will be kinematics and let's say dynamics. Now I have all of the topics. I took my PDF or the actual physical paper I just solved. I moved one by one by one and I input the topic and the specific subject that what the topic was about. Why is it important to have it over here? Because then you can ask ChatGPT to give you an analysis, for example, only of for, bi of for biology, and then you make a schedule only about biology. Now, did I get it correctly? Let's do, yes, like this, just for the sake of example. No. No, 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 no. Cool, now you have what was the question number and how many questions you had in total in this exam? How many subjects do you have? What was the specific subject, topic and subject? Did you get it correctly? And now for yourself, what I would do is notes because you already analyze it and would be notes to self. Why did I get it correctly or incorrectly? And according to me, what, I sh what should I do, what I should do next 
that's pretty much what you should do. And then over here, you will fill it with a lot of text, but you are going to kind of hide it and delete it when you export this file, just for the sake of probability and statistics. And then what you're going to do is that you're going to go files, you're going to go to download, and then download a uh, Microsoft Excel file, or another thing you can do is download, download a CSV file, files that the ChatGPT can actually read. And you're going to say like this, so <clears throat> let's download the file. Okay, so I just uploaded the file I just exported for my Google Sheet. And I'm going to say, hey, I am taking the IMAT exam, which is a competitive admission exam for medical schools in Italy. I am, you really talk to it like it's your tutor pretty much. I am a few weeks before the exam and I want to find a few things. One, the probability of a specific subject. And I'm using this specific terminology, right? Because it has in the column, so specific subject. I'm, the probability of a specific subject to appear on the paper. I just solved and analyzed. I am using past papers as simulators to rely on to find my weak spots. And then I just upload my info to this Google, to this sheet I am uploading here and two according to you to you what are my odds to get this specific topic wrong and what should I prioritize based on what repeats the most often on past paper on past papers as well as and that's it what repeats most in the past pa paper that i am attaching here for you to analyze and then say thank you because when the ai take over it will remember you as a good person then you send it and it will just upload so it, it's a big too big so it won't show it but it, now it's it's going to analyze your actual PDF. It's going to understand the sheet. You see, I have uh, a couple of sheets here because I did it as an example, but this one is empty. It could be with more IMAT papers that you solved, so it will be able to, but over here it will be empty. Now it sees, okay, question number, topic, specific subject, did I get it correctly? Notes to self, nothing. And then it gives you the idea, analyzing it, and then check this out, what it gave you. Okay, probability of stuff to appear, and I'm using 4.0 by the way, it's a paid version, I think you have a free version where you can uh, use this as well, so it's no longer completely paid, but I'm using the paid version which gives you an unlimited amount of questions, I, I think, I don't remember at this point. So dinner replication, 20% of my exam, let's check if it was correct. So 1, 2 out of 10, cool. Weekend arguments 1, fine conclusions 1, 1, 1, the rest was 1. Cool, now it analyzed it correctly. Now, what are my odds to get it correctly? Error rate, 50% DNA replication, which is the first one. Dynamics, 100%, but it was one question. Now, all of this, one to eight, it was only a single time. So, only one type. You see, it was only one time, all of them. This is one sub specific subject, one, one, one. DNA replication appeared twice, so it's going to be the highest in my prioritization. You have 50% error rate, the question appeared twice, so it's going to be number one. Now imagine you have data, check this out, so much information, so much recommendation that is actually correct. It's a higher probability, 20% to appear and moderate error rate. It's actually information from the data I just gave to it. Imagine you have like four, 500 questions that you're going to input to it because you have so many past papers that you solve. It could be any paper. It doesn't have to be the IMAT exam. As long as you are using the subjects from the syllabus, it could be past paper of books you are using, of the Pearson's bio Pearson chemistry. It could be, it can be BMAT, for example. So you can take all of the past section two of all of the BMATs and then ask, hey, what was the most competitive, repetitive over them? Also, did I get it correctly? You can take the past talk exams, for example, 
translate them from Italian to English, do the same thing, see for yourself what repeats the most, and then what are your odds to get an issue and come up with a problem with this specific subject. And then how are you going to make a study planner? You're going to take the things that you have, the things that we have the higher probability, the highest probability to actually appear on past paper based on Talk, Testimony China, and past paper of the IMAT that we have so many at this point. So Testimony China or Talk in the past couple of years, but Testimony China before, it was called Testimony China in Italian, and then past papers of the IMAT in English. You have like 1,000 something questions to know what repeats the most, and then you ask it, hey, based on what repeats the most, what are my error rate in this specific subject? And then you have prioritization of what to do before something else now in the next couple of weeks. And it's pretty much just doing very, not very, but to me at least it will be very complex math that I don't really know how to do. The, the average person doesn't really know how to do because you have statistics and probability over here. It's a bit complex to do and you don't want to do it with thousands of questions which you would reach a point where all of the past papers it will be like 800 questions the testimony china 1000 questions so you have so much information to analyze here and it will just do it for you but a few less things to actually know make sure you use the terminology i'm using because i did it so many times at this point and i realized that if you don't really give it the specific terminology and you're not using the terms in the columns to explain it what you you are even saying it's not going to really understand what you want from it and that's it i hope it makes sense uh, i'm also teaching for the IMAT and the the link for my own course where i teach thousands of students in the past couple of years is in the description if you want more of this kind of tips if you find it helpful and you want more detailed kind of approach for the IMAT exam I will be your address. You can check my website, entermedschool.com, for a lot, a lot of free material. You have study material. So you have my study planner. You have free biology book that I wrote in the past couple of years. You have a lot, a lot of stuff that for free over there. And also I have different classes that are kind of like coaching and live classes that I do every summer for the exam in very affordable price compared to all of the courses that are available today. So you might be interested in checking them out. And that's it. Bye-bye, everyone. See you in the next video.